Hello everyone, I'm Arnold Melibiran, your professor for ACC 204 or Cost Accounting and Controls. And for today's video lecture, I will be discussing the highlights on the end-to-end -end business processes of different businesses or organizations and I will be discussing and expounding more on the materials part of our manufacturing costs. And and for today's video lecture, allow me to start this discussion through revisiting on the purchasing process of our business processes. And, and for this one, for sure, if you watched the video, first video lecture for this week, you had an idea about the materials requisition form. And so I've discussed there the applicability that the materials requisition form is applicable for any issuances of raw materials that will be used in the production processes. And for today's discussion, I want you to have more appreciation on the concept on the different uh, marketing documents being applied to a company and so that you can uh, see the bigger picture how do we maintain the controls and how to ensure that there is an accountability as as there as we have different cost flows on our product costs yeah so first uh, since we are going to highlight here the materials part so let us revisit ano ba yung time wherein we have the initiation for the recording of the materials inventory so technically, we'll have a recording of materials inventory during the purchasing process and the specific part of the purchasing process would be related to the receiving of the item. And so uh, just to give a highlight when ano ba yung mga nagiging decisions na management to allow them or para ma-enable sila na they need to purchase additional purchases. So again, so we do have the so-called MRP process wherein the company could estimate or could project ano ba yung mga dapat na raw materials na kailangan nilang bilhin as part of their production. Yeah. And also they could project ano ba yung dapat na volume ng production nila on a daily basis. Yeah. And usually, these projections are based on the historical sales performance of an organization. Yeah. So technically, for us to purchase a certain item to our suppliers, yeah, we do have the so-called purchase order. And in the purchase order, ito yung document na magsusupport ng lahat ng bibili natin to a certain supplier. Kung baga, nandito lahat yung specific item, specific quantity na order natin sa mga customers na, as sa mga suppliers natin. And once na ma-receive na natin yung order from the supplier, that's the time that we'll have a receiving document. Yan. For some uh, small companies, no, uh, depende na yung applicability ng receiving document. Pero for some, they issue a uh, a uh, separate document pa yung receiving document nila. And usually naman yung highlight dito, basta nandiyan yung total quantities na mare-receive mo from the supplier. Yan. And kung ano yung mga items na i-receive mo. And syempre kung sino yung supplier natin. Dapat naka-indicate din with our receiving document. Ayan. And after we, we receive the items directly from the supplier, ayan. So, the accounting side will process the invoicing. Wherein, in the processing of the invoice, the accountant would record the related payables to the supplier. And, and after the recording of the payable, so we'll have a separate part wherein the accountant will request for payment to this specific supplier. And so, that's the outgoing payment side method. Yun. So, normally, the materials requisition eh, the materials requisition form is being issued if we need to issue out certain items from a warehouse. And for us to have more appreciation on the different cycle pa within the production processes, allow me to show with you the exact or more detailed flowchart of the whole 
business processes that would be related to materials. Ayan. So, allow me to shift lang ng screen ko. Ayan. As you can see in my screen right now, this is a highlight for the materials acquisition. Wherein, mas detailed siya and indicated yung purpose why we have that kind of department in an organization sino yung responsible party ano yung mga exact na uh, parang highlights dun sa mga related documents na magsusupport dun sa business transaction natin ayan so for this flow chart this would give you more appreciation on the materials acquisition process natin wherein just to start, no? So, technically, in every company, we do have the so-called warehouse. Yan. And the warehouse, the storeroom, ayan. Normally, itong mga warehouses natin or the storeroom, ito yung nag-safeguard na mga inventory items natin. And, yun. Since nasa kanila yung inventory natin, so they need to maintain a separate ledger for the materials. So, we do have the so-called sub-ledger for each items being maintained by the company. And, technically, if si storeroom yung, uh, yung department na responsible in identifying ano ba yung uh, mga need nilang stock pa, like yung mga pag napapansin nila na may stock sila na kailangan na nilang i-repurchase, due to low level of inventory. Yan. So, sila yung responsible then on the creation of the purchase requisition. Yan. So, for the purchase requisition, uh, ito yung parang, syempre magre-request ka to the purchasing department to purchase this kind of item kasi kulang na yung stock ng company. Yan. And yun, upon... Uh, issue once of the purchase requisition and if ma-approve na siya ng mga corresponding supervisors ng document na to, technically this file will be issued to the purchasing department and upon approval, si purchasee ang gagawin dyan, syempre, dun na papasok yung sa purchase order natin. Ayan. So, in some instances, no, uh, in, lalo na in multinational companies, nag-start sila with purchase requisition. But to simplify the Purchasing processes natin, most companies do apply na mag-initiate on the purchase order yung purchasing process nila. That's why as you can see in my flowchart, most accounting systems are applying to initiate the purchasing process through creation of purchase order. Yeah. Pero yun, may mga internal processes for the purchase requisitions na minsan hindi na reflected sa accounting system since it would require a lot of number of users. Yeah and giving uh, separate credentials or licenses for the requesting department in case there will be a need for additional stocks that would entail additional costing on the subscription for the accounting system. Ayun, so once na ma-process na yung, purchasing, yung purchase requisition and once na ma Create na yung purchase order natin. So, technically, the purchase order document will be provided to the supplier. Yan. And, syempre, once na ma-verify ni supplier yung uh, correct details or yung mga specifics na mga orders ng certain company, yan. so, they will fulfill the obligation. And once na ma-fulfill nila, the company or this specific company would need to receive the item from the supplier. Yan. And yun, once na ma-receive siya, so ang um, corresponding transaction natin for the receiving would be this part. Yan. So, technically, si storeroom yung responsible for the receiving of the items or si warehouse. Yan. Depende na lang sa logistics setup ng company. Yan. And yun, once na ma-receive naman siya ng warehouse natin and ma-validate na tama naman yung mga items, yan, automatically updated na yung ledger natin for materials. Yan. So that's the time na mag-trigger na magkakaroon tayo ng journal entry for the materials inventory. Yan. So kung perpetual basis, directly record, direct ang recording natin to inventory account. Pero kung uh, periodic basis, ayan, so we do have the setup for the purchase account. 
And yun, so once na ma-receive na yung item, syempre, nandyan na yung part na kailangan na mag-create uh, ng related payables to the supplier. Yan, so that's why dito na papasok yung sa invoicing part natin. Ayan. And for the invoicing part, yan, so dito na yung makakakreate tayo ng uh, accounts payable. And yung usual na company or department na responsible for the invoicing would be the accounting department. Yeah. And yun, syempre marirecord na sa subledger ng payables natin, ng suppliers natin, yung related uh, balance natin to the supplier. And yun, they need to have a parang issue an authorization for the pay payment to this specific supplier. Yan. So, that's why magkakaroon tayo ng processing of the vouchers na. Yan. And yun, pag na-process na yung voucher natin, technically, we could pay the supplier either by check on cash or pwede naman usually fund transfer. Yan. And kapag na bayaran na natin sa supplier, so, may eliminate na yung ating na-create na Accounts payable. Ayan, so that's the highlight lang dun sa mga related controls that we could apply on the materials part. And then yun, for this video lecture, allow me to give you an overview lang on the different accounting for the materials. And this would be applicable both sa direct materials natin and for indirect materials. And for this, uh, for this file, so I, I'm using here the De Leon. I think De Leon to. Yeah. De Leon yung reference ko. So, I will be giving you a copy of this scanned files ng De Leon as your reference. Yeah. So, I think De Leon or Guerrero, pero parang De Leon nga ata siya. Yeah. Yun. So, for this one, so technically, hindi ko naman siya papasadahan lahat, no? Kasi I'm sure nadaanan na natin yung iba, like yung difference between the periodic and perpetual. Yan. Knowing the setup of the income statements on the two differs. Yan. So I'm pretty sure na very familiar na kayo on that. Yan. So what I would like to highlight here is, yan, unang-una is about the control procedures and the commonly used control procedures na in natin sa materials. Yan. So, for the control procedures, yeah, so very important that the company have an extensive inventory monitoring and they need to have a specific internal controls na in place in monitoring their inventories. The reason why is to, syempre, prevent na magkaroon ng uh, ineffectiveness on the operation of the company and such ineffectiveness would result to pag-stop ng production yan hindi agad pag-fulfill ng mga deliveries to the customers yan and yun so yun yun yung highlight for the control procedures and for this video lecture allow me to share with you different uh, commonly used control procedures in applying this concept in the materials of the product cost natin. Yan. And first on the commonly used control procedures is the order cycling. Ayan. Normally for the order cycling, yan. so we do apply here the reassessment or parang uh, inventory counting yan. or reviewing on the levels of the inventory on a periodic basis. Like every month, yeah. Normally, naman all manufacturing companies are doing monthly physical count, yeah. And yon, for some businesses, they have shorter period. Like actually, may mga businesses na nagka count daily, lalo na yung mga fast moving items, yeah. They need to count daily para lang mas accurate yung inventory accounts nila, yeah. So, for the order cycling, so, ang ginagawa dito ng uh, most companies, they are setting a certain interval when to repurchase a certain item. Yeah. And those interval could either be, for example, pwede namang 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. 
Yeah. That's why there's a periodic pre-assessment kasi baka mamaya 90 days yung interval ng pag-order ng certain raw materials. Pero 60 days pa lang, nauubos na pala. Ayan. Yan. And another control procedures that we could apply on the materials would be the min-max method. And for the min-max method, this method is based on the assumption that materials inventory have minimum and maximum levels. Yan. So technically, kapag malapit ng mag-maximum or at maximum level na yung ating inventories, so ang action dyan ng management or ng mga supervisors ng warehouses natin or ng purchasing department would be to stop uh, repurchasing of this kind of items na meron sila. And kapag naman nearing minimum na or at minimum level na yung ating certain items, yan, it's a triggering point for the uh, purchasing side na they need to reacquire na additional stocks. Yan. And two-bin method. Yan. For the two-bin method, this method is used for materials that are considered inexpensive or non-essential. So, mostly the advantages for the two-bin method is that super simple lang niyang i-apply. As in, meron kang dalawang bin for your inventory items. Yan. And normally, syempre, uubusin mo muna yung isang bin before you... Uh, restock the uh, before you use the second bin. Ayan. Parang ganun yung nangyayari. And once na maubos na yung first bin, that's your signal to repurchase that specific materials. Ayan. And then yun. So for the automatic order system. So yan, since most companies nag apply na ng accounting system or computerized na yung accounting system nila. So, pwedeng automatic na yung placing of the order. Wherein, kapag automated siya in a certain accounting system setup, yung purchase order, parang si computer na yung mag-recreate. And automatically will be sent out to the suppliers at a certain date kung ano yung magiging configuration nila. Yan. So, may mga ganong setup na tayo innovation on the accounting system. Ayan. And the IBC plan or the activity-based costing, so we'll have more of this on a separate discussion. Pero uh, normally, sinesegregate natin based on the activities yung costing natin. Kumbaga, we're identifying ano ba yung mga main activities related to a certain job. And based on those activities, yun yung nagiging consideration natin at paano natin ipupul yung mga costs na may impact on the product costing. Yan. And ABC plan is mainly applicable for companies na mataas yung volume ng materials. And super iba-iba yung value or monetary amount ng certain materials. Okay, so for the materials control naman, I would like to highlight here that there are two basic aspects of materials control. Yeah. For the two basic aspects, so we'll be having here the discussion about the physical control or safeguarding of materials or the control of the investment in materials. Yeah. So for the Physical control or safeguarding of materials, I would like to highlight here the concept of compensating control. I'm not sure if na mentioned ko siya on previous video lecture, but again, for the uh, concept of the compensating control, there will be a compensa compensating control to a certain account or certain processes. If magkakaiba yung uh, nag-process or parang mag-authorize ng transactions, and then, iba rin yung nagre-record. And iba yung may custody. Yan, yun yung highlight natin. And the same theory is applicable to inventories. Yan. So, in general, you can see here the three points. First is the limited access. And so, this is more on about the authorization. Second is the segregation of duties. Yan. And third is about the accuracy in recording. Okay. 
Yan. So, ang highlight natin for the first material control is really about the prevention on the misappropriation of assets. Yeah. And then, next material control is about the control of the investment in materials. Ayan. Siyempre, ayaw din naman natin na sobra-sobra yung ma-purchase natin na materials to a certain organization. Ayaw naman natin na sobra-sobra yung or parang exceeding to above the minimum requirement ng production facility natin yung ma-purchase natin. That's why we do have different uh, concept that we could apply in a manufacturing company for them to control the specific monetary amount we are allotting for materials. And first consideration natin dyan or first application would be the order point. Ayan. For the order point, ito yung application na uh, we have three factors na tinitingnan. So, first is the usage, second is the lead time, and the safety stock. Yan. So, for these factors na tinitingnan natin, yung makocompute natin by applying the formula on how to compute the order point, ito yung makakapag-dictate sa management that they need to reorder these certain stocks. Kapag na-reach na ng SKU or stock keeping unit or the inventory item, yung gantong level. And yun. So, for you to compute the order point, syempre we need to multiply the usage times the lead time. So, yung usage natin, ito yung parang nagiging daily usage natin for a certain materials. Like, for example, in the manufacturing of face masks, if yung production facility natin consuming for example uh, 500 pieces na cloth yan kung yun yung unit of measurement natin for the raw materials part ng face mask yan so kung 500 pieces of cloth yung ginagamit on a daily basis yan so yun yung magiging uh, gagamitin natin in computing the order point and then yung lead time naman, ito yung time interval between placing the order versus the receiving of the order from the suppliers. Yan. So kung gano'n siya yung tinagal nun, yun yung magiging lead time consideration natin. And syempre kapag mas, ma, ha, mas tatagal yung lead time, we need to uh, set a uh, parang mas mahaba or parang earlier na reorder point. Unlike kapag very fast moving no item, super ikli ng lead time, hindi naman natin kailangan ang interval ng purchases, repurchase natin for that certain materials would be that that parang ganong ka-tight or ganong ka-short yung period. So, usually, longer yung period ng reorder point kapag mas maikli yung lead time and kapag mas mahaba yung lead time, yan, mas maikli yung reordering point. Kasi, yun nga. For example, ang best application na mas mahaba ang lead time would be the importation uh, or importation activities. Ayan. So, yung mga imported goods natin. And for the imported goods, usually, it will take months bago ma-receive yung certain item. So, kung hahabaan mo yung interval ng reordering process mo, parang it would be difficult for the company to use instantly yung mga kailangan nilang materials for their production. Ayan. And yun, for the safety stock naman, ito yung rec parang ito yung parang kayang itolerate na minimum inventory level ng isang company. Ayan. And ito yung kailangan nilang i-maintain to prevent the running out of stocks. Ayan. Ayan, and for us to compute the order point, so yun, daily usage times lead time, then yung answer done, we have to add the safety stock. For us to know when to reorder the same item by applying the order point concept. Ayan. And then next is about the concept on the economic order quantity. And yun, usually, for the economic order quantity, so... Aside from the lead time, the usage, and safety stock, so meron tayong other factors na tinitingnan. And for this particular concept yan, yung tinitingnan pa natin na factor would, 
would be the following. So first is the material storage and handling costs. Yeah. So nakoconsider din siya. And second is the in interest, the insurance, and property taxes. Third is the loss. And fourth is the records and supplies associated with the carrying of the inventories. Yeah. So yan yung mga kailangan yung tandaan with regards to the application of the EOQ. Yeah. And yun, so for us to compute, kumbaga itong mako-compute nating amount by applying EOQ concept, ito yung mag-trigger din sa management na when to uh, reorder that certain materials. Yan. So parang similar lang with the order point, uh, order point concept pero yun, iba lang yung way ng computation natin. Wherein, we need to identify the factors such as yung cost of placing an order and the number of units required for us to purchase this certain item and the carrying cost per unit of inventory. So, very applicable si EOQ kapag uh, may mga transaction yung company na meron kasi tayong concept na tinatawag na, for example, blanket agreement. Yan, if you've heard about that term. Wherein in the blanket agreement, there is a required stocks na kailangan bilhin ng isang company sa supplier for that particular period. For, let's say, for example, one year yung duration ng blanket agreement natin. And indicated in the blanket agreement that the company should... Uh, Purchase dun sa supplier, for example, 1,000 sheets of cloth. Yan. So, yung 1,000 sheets na yun, syempre kailangan may internal uh, decision si management kung tuwing kailan ba nila bibilhin yung 1,000 sheets na yun. Hindi naman siya kailangan bilhin na one time na biglaan. So, pwede siyang spread out dun sa duration ng blanket agreement. That's why, pag mga ganun yung setup, mas applicable si EOQ versus kay order point. Pero parehas namang applicable. Depende sa decision ng management kung alin yung procedures na gagawin. And yun, for us to compute for the EOQ, yan, so technically, yan, for this one, so let's consider this Okay, yung na-mention ko is for the formula method. Pero yun, for the tabular method, medyo hindi naman siya ganun applicable mostly on the problems. And very limited lang yung problems na nagbibigay ng tabular method. Pero yun, you need to uh, focus more on the formula. Kasi in, a, in an actual setup, no, medyo mahirap i-determine each components na na-mention sa tabular method natin such as yung total order and quoting costs. Yan. So, usually, mahirap siyang i-determine per item in an actual setup. Yan. And then, even the average inventory, minsan hindi readily available yung information. Depende na lang kung ano yung nagiging inventory management ng company. Yan. And yun. Pero yun, for this illustration, allow me to focus na lang muna for the formula method. And yun, sa uluhin nyo lang yung formula, wherein the C stands for the cost of placing an order, K stands for the carrying cost per unit, and N stands for number of units required annually. Normally, very straightforward given lahat ng factors sa mga problems. And yun, i-apply nyo lang yung formula. And so for this one, mas embrace nyo yung concept na this kind of controls are existing sa mga management natin. And it allows them to have more extensive monitoring on their inventory through the application of these concepts. Ayan. So hindi na ako mag dig into details as to illustration. Ayan. And John. So, for this one, uh, illustration lang din siya ng order point. So, yun. So, i, i trust, I'm, tra, I'm trusting nyo na lang, class, na you'll read or you'll memorize the given formula. Yan. So, skip lang tayo ng ilang pages. Yan. Since mga problem sets na lang to. Ayan. So, let's focus more on the different controls or the supporting uh, business papers sa materials part natin. Yan. 
So yun, for you to have an idea ano ba yung mga basic information that we have on the marketing documents na na-mention ko dun sa flowcharts natin and dun sa end-to-end -end business processes natin. So first is the purchase requisition. Ayan. So for the purchase requisition, normally, uh, there is a requesting department na, na nagsasabi dun sa purchasing department natin na they need additional stocks. That's why they are requesting the purchasing department to purchase this kind of stocks. Yeah. So, yun, in a normal setup naman, no, ang highlight lang talaga dyan is ano ba yung, ilang quantity ba yung kailangan ng requesting department? And ano ba yung materials na kailangan nilang i-request? And, syempre, yung, yung unit price, usually, ang nagde-determine nito in most cases is the purchasing department. Yeah. Kasi, uh, si purchasing department ang mas nakakaalam kung sino ba yung lagi nilang katransaksyon na supplier. Lalo na kung recurring purchases to. Yan. And in most cases, no, the access of the requesting department is limited only on the quantities. Hindi nila nakikita yung column for the unit price. Kung i-apply natin siya on a computerized accounting system. Yan. Yun, and another document is about the purchase order. Ayan. So, all, syempre kung anong details ng purchase requisition natin, dapat yun yung setup din ng purchase order natin. Ayan. And for some classes, no, I've had a live discussion. And, yun, siguro for this particular video, pero hopefully you guys read this in, with confidentiality. Allow me to show to you briefly ano bang itsura niya with an accounting system setup. Yan. So, one of my activities in my accounting firm is the implementation of accounting system. Pero, yun, for your for the knowledge na lang din ng mga hindi ko nagawa ng live discussion, yan. And in ad additional knowledge na lang din do sa mga uh, hindi ko na-discuss na ng gantong part, like yung mga purchasing insights natin, ano yung mga functions under the purchasing side, ayan. So, for this particular discussion, so, di ba kanina, nandun tayo sa purchase order. Yan. So, normally, ito talaga yung initiation in most purchasing setup sa mga accounting system. And kung titingnan natin yung purchase order ng mga most accounting system, yan, hindi na yan nagkakalayo na ito yung mga relevant dyan. Siyempre, nandyan yung information ng supplier, information... Yan, ang very important in a computerized accounting system is that each document na i-process mo, meron dapat unique document number. Yan. So, may may document number yan, may PO number yan na allotted. And, syempre, yung the item code, yan, very relevant in maintaining the inventory management in the system. And, auto-populated naman yun na once tinelect mo yung item code, May mga accounting system that could auto-populate the other information of the item, such as yung item name niya. Yan. And then, eh, since purchase order to, yan, the user or the personnel from the purchasing department need to set ano ba yung quantity based on the purchase requisition. Yan. And normally, meron pa itong mga quotation. If nag go ng bidding process with a certain supplier, yan. so minsan kapag kailangan ng bidding to a certain supplier, they need to have some purchase quotation pa. And after pa ng purchase quotation tayo, saka makakapag-process ng purchase order. But to simplify the accounting setup, yan, most companies are applying na ang ginagawa nila sa computerized accounting system nila, directly accessing through purchase order na. Yeah. So, for this one, syempre, very important ano yung agreed price between the supplier and the buyer. Yeah. And syempre, yung mga related tax. Yeah. In local application, very important to assign ano ba yung mga local taxes na makakapag-contribute dun sa increase in the costs of the materials. Yeah. And yun, yung mga other information na makikita nyo dito, depende na siya sa applicability ng company kung magiging applicable. Yeah. Ayun. So, that's the part of the purchase order. Yeah. Yan, for the receiving report, technically, it's a receiving document lang din na ang ginagawa ng most companies dyan. So, kung sa accounting system setup yan, Kung anong details ng purchase order, yun lang din ang details dapat ng receiving document natin. And we do have this so-called stock guard 
receiving of items wherein we receive partially the goods na madedeliver ng supplier natin. Hindi naman siya requirement na kung magkano yung kung ilan yung quantity ng purchase order natin, yun lang yung dapat na laman ng isang receiving report natin. So, limited to that, pero syempre, pwede namang partial lang yung receiving ng good natin. Ayan. So, yun, and next is yung the materials requisition form. Ayan, so, may discussion naman tayo on the materials requisition form dun sa naging initial video lecture ko. So, I won't discuss much about this. And then yun, the methods of costing materials. So, i-apply nyo pa din yung natutunan nyo doon sa first year accounting nyo. Sa basic accounting nyo, the FIFO and the average cost. Yan. For some cases, di ba meron tayong LIFO pero hindi siya pwede for the, based on the accounting standard natin. Yan. Prohibited yung application ng LIFO. Pero may mga companies pa din na nag apply ng LIFO. Yan. Hindi lang siya ganun ka-applicable for companies na may expiration date yung kanilang items. Yan. And then, yun. So, if ano guys, ha, i-reach out nyo na lang ako if gusto nyo ma-reminis or if you wanted us to have a separate discussion on the exact computation on the FIFO application and the uh, moving average Yan. So, sabihan nyo na lang ako kung nalimutan nyo na itong concept na to. So, hopefully, ma-recall nyo siya. Kasi, yun, hindi na siya usually tinatakel on the cost accounting part. And then, yun. So, kayo na bahalang aralin to, guys, ha, yung part ng 5 and moving average. Basta ang important lang dyan, if you are going to conceptualize it, on the 5 basis, make sure na lahat ng beginning balances mo and initial purchases, yun yung unan yung i-issue out. Kapag moving average naman, nagkakaroon tayo ng adjustments on the unit price every time na meron tayong purchases or every time na may uh, issuance ng materials. Itong issuance na to either consumption sa direct materials natin, yung direct materials consumption natin during the production process, yan. or pwede din naman yung mga, may mga raw materials kasi na readily can be, parang readily available sa market na pwede mo siyang ibenta directly. So yun, that's a form of issuance pa rin of the, of the inventory. Yan. yan. So yun. Ang next na gusto kong ma-highlight for this video lecture would be the applicability. So, for the discounts, ayan. So, remember that for the discounts, no? So, sige, pasadahan natin itong mga special problems in material accounting. So, I knew na very familiar na kayo on this. Pero for your reference na din, since this would be, we will encounter more of this sa mga other subjects nyo for sure. Particularly in financial accounting. Ayan. So, for the discounts, yan, meron kasi tayong tinatawag na trade discounts. Yan. And for the trade discounts application, usually may ganito tayong concept to encourage uh, the buyers to buy in bulk. Yan. Kasi pag bulk yung ordering ng mga customers, usually meron siyang related na trade discounts. Yan. And usually, ina-extend din yung trade discount to increase the collection on the receivables. Yan. Yan. Yun yung mga main reason why we have this kind of discount. And yun, yung application naman ng trade discount, normally hindi na siya reflected on the books. Yan. So, if you are going to record your purchases of materials, you need to directly deduct those trade discounts. Yan. Yun lang naman siya. And meron din tayong mga Quantity discounts na tinatawag na usually, usually habang nag increase yung volume nung pinapurchase ng company, it could also trigger uh, parang volume discounts. Yan. And for cash discounts naman, yan. so highlight for the cash discounts, ito yung mga discounts na nare-record on books. And yun, pinakang application ng cash discounts would be to increase the payment on the 
receivables of the customers or payables natin to us dun sa supplier. Yeah. So, kung sa perspective ng company na may payables, so, we will avail the cash discount if you want to pay at a lesser amount on our payables. Yeah. Pero kung sa point of view on sales naman to, yan. So, we are going to extend the discount to our customers para ma-encourage silang mas magbayad na mas maga. So, yun lang. Huwag na natin siyang gawin complicated. So, yun. So, I'll give you this scanned copy. Yan. The whole chapter of the textbook para magkaroon kayo ng practice problems. Yan. So, uh, So, we'll have a separate discussion pa naman on the problems, particularly on approaching multiple choice based na questionnaires. Yan. Okay, don't freight in. So, again, for the freight in naman, ito yung mga uh, freight charges or yung mga delivery charges na part ng product cost natin. Yeah. And for the freight in concept, yan, recall nyo yung mga shipping point, yan saka destination na yan. Di ba yun yung main type ng freight charge natin? Kung sino bang kailangan mag-shoulder ng cost. Is it a seller or the buyer? And then, i-recall nyo din dyan yung freight collect and freight prepaid. Ayan. Dapat alam na alam nyo na yan, class. Ha? Kasi it's a recap lang din of your basic accounting. And then yun. So, yan. For our next discussion, allow me to introduce to you the basic uh, accounting approach that we have for material, materials in case na nagkakaroon tayo ng spoilage. And so, in my video lecture uh, previously, uh, I've highlighted there that we recognize as period cause all abnormal losses. Pero dun sa mga uh, normal losses, ayan, yan yung pwede nating ma-charge to a certain job if it could be identified specifically to a job or pwede namang i-charge in the whole production. Yeah. Ayan. So, as to spoiled units, ayan. So, ito yung mga possible losses na ma-encounter ng isang company. So, we do have the spoiled, the defective, the scrap, and the waste materials. Ayan. So, spoiled units, ito yung mga units or yung mga items na isang company na no longer within the quality of their products. Yan. So, hindi na nagmimit ng mga standards, production standards ng isang company. That's why, for the spoiled units, it is considered as a loss kasi hindi mo na siya parang pwedeng ibenta similarly with the good products. Pero yon kahit spoiled units kasi siya, pwede siyang ibenta at a lower price. Yan. For example, so, in a manufacturing of bonds, ayan, so, naalala ko lang yung previous client ko, so, uh, yung client ko before is a supplier of McDonald's ng burger bonds nila. And, super higpit lang ng audit ng McDonald's for this specific supplier, particularly for the bonds production ng certain client ko na to. And the moment na hindi na siya aligned with the standard of McDonald's, yung nagiging bonds, so, ang ginagawa na dyan, syempre, part na siya ng spoiled units ng company. Pero, to ensure na hindi naman sayang yung food, kasi, ano pa din siya eh, edible pa din naman yung food, hindi lang siya pasok sa standard ng McDonald's. So, they could sell it most likely dun sa employees nila or dun sa mga walk-in customers nila na gustong bumili ng mga defective products. Yan. Yan. So, yun. Yun yung in-offer nila. Yan. And, yun. We could also associate the spoiled units to defective units. So, for this one, so more on, pwede siya matreat as defective and at the same time, pwede spoiled eh. Meron kasi mga Uh, spoiled mga mga bands na na parang na, na naging hindi na in good units like parang during the production process nagkulang ng mga ingredients and madaling nasira ayan yun yung mga part na masasabi natin na totally hindi na edible ayan. pero kung edible pa pwedeng ibenta ulit to 
parang pwedeng ibenta lang hindi naman magkakaroon ng violation with any government agency lalo lalo na like sa mga BPAD natin yan FDA natin yan so yun magiging part siya ng defective units natin Yan. And normally, for those kind of defective units, so, hindi naman siya kailangan talagang i-process pa further. So, ang nangyayari na lang dito, separate bundling activity for the defective units. And yun. So, pero in theories, no, yung defective units natin, usually, ito yung mga items na kailangan pang ma-process further para ma-consider as good units. Ayan. So, parang nire-reward talaga yung defective items para maging saleable pa din siya in a normal condition. Yan. Crop materials naman natin, ito yung mga leftover ng production natin. Yan. Na, syempre, as a, as a leftover, usually hindi naman siya pwedeng idagdag na to the same production processes. Yan. And waste materials naman, ito yung mga leftover ng production natin na Mostly, talagang wastages na siya na for disposal na yung intention. Yeah. Katulad na lang, halimbawa, yung mga scraps, ay yung mga waste, waste ng production natin ng mga poultry industry. Yeah. Pag poultry type yung business, normally meron tayo yung mga, uh, yung mga dumi ng hayop. Yeah. Normally, considered as waste materials. Yeah. Yung accounting treatment natin for those kind of losses. And yun, there are two basic methods in accounting for the spoiled materials. Ayan. So, first is the ch direct charge to the specific job. Ayan. Kung direct charge naman to specific job, technically, we need to have an entry of the spoiled goods. Ayan. And credit to work in process. And syempre, kung ito ay magbe-base dun sa actual spoiled goods natin or actual spoiled materials. Yan. Pwede kasi yung direct charge to all production instead. Instead na specific job, yung magiging accounting treatment natin. Wherein kapag charge to all production, we'll go, we're going to have an entry separately for the overhead costs. Yan. Ayan. And for illustration, yan, dito tayo magkaroon ng sample problems. Yan. So, normally in a job order setup, so we do have a specific job na we know work on. And for this illustrative problem, so job 3044, called for making of 4,000 with this unit costs. Yan. Ito yung mga unit costs ng certain job. And yun, in all job order costing problems, ang kailangan nyo lang dyan i-highlight would be the following costs talaga. Yung mga manufacturing costs natin. Dyan lang iikot yung mga problems natin on job order. Yan. Yan. And we need to remember no, na for the application on the charge to all production, yan, we're providing an allowance for the spoiled work. Yan. And for us to answer this problem, Yan, so, sinabi dito, given sa problem na we had a rejected units amounting to 200 units. Yan. Hindi pala amounting. 200 yung quantity ng rejected units natin. And a normal number were sold for 18 pesos each. Yan. If charged to all production yung ating losses, so remember 200 units yung losses natin. And if we charge natin to all production, so our entry would be as follows. First, we need to uh, and we need to have a journal entry for the recording muna. Siyempre, ng conversion natin. Ng pag-transfer ng materials amount natin, ng labor account natin, at saka mga overhead, applied overhead costs natin to a work-in-process account. So, given naman sa problem yung mga unit costs na, eh, yung mga unit costs na natin. And yun, if you are going to compute for it, yan. So, we have a computation naman here stating na na-mention naman sa problem natin na 4,000 yung na-produce na units. And identifying the manufacturing costs of the produced units, yan. You need to multiply the produced units to the corresponding unit costs. Okay. 
and that's 15, 13, and 12. And then yun. So for us to record naman the spoiled goods, and for the spoiled goods, yan, ang application is charged to all production. So we need to have a debit. Remember, debit to factory overhead control account and credit to work in process. And yung amount na kailangan natin i-debit would be uh, to the extent na di ba 200 yung rejected units natin. Ayan. And then, we need to multiply it by 18 kasi yun yung given natin na sale, selling price of this item. Ayan. Normally, kung ano yung selling price ng isang item, yun yung magiging basis ng entry natin for the spoiled goods. So, that would amount to 200 times 18, 360. And yung magiging factory overhead control amount natin would be based dun sa total na manufacturing costs natin. So, yung total manufacturing costs natin would be uh, 40 per unit times the spoiled units na 200. And you need to deduct here, syempre, yung spoiled units na 36. That's why we came up with 4,400. Na-follow nyo yun. Yan. Kasi we have to assume na as if na-process muna itong mga defective units natin. Yan. So, technically naman, since defective siya, nag-undergo muna siya ng production processes. That's why we need to eliminate this, the total manufacturing cost related to these rejected units on the initially recorded work in process account. Yan. Kaya 8,000 yung naging total credits natin. Kasi 8,000 yung 40 times 200 rejected units. Ayan. And from the 8,000 na ni-record natin na rejected units, yan, syempre we need to have, kung charge to all production yan, we need to consider na yung selling price, we need to create a separate spoiled goods account for that. Ayan. Gets nyo? Gets nyo yung part na yun. And yun, for the last part naman, which is about the if ever there will be a sale of the remaining good units. Yan. So, yung remaining good units natin technically would be the difference between the initially recorded work in process less the 8,000 na defective. Yan. And yun, that would amount to 152,000. So, ang difference, no, kung uh, siguro you're wondering bakit may factory overhead control account pa tayo is because uh, we could not, for this particular uh, illustrative problem, in most cases, no, para ang concept behind this one is that hindi natin ma-identify na yung 200 rejected units talaga is that applicable to job 3044. That's why, uh, Nagkakaroon tayo ng consideration na we need to treat it muna as if a good units and then yun, yung magiging excess niya, kumbaga yun yung supposedly na ang tawag dito, parang yun yung cost of sales natin for this particular defective units, yan, yun yung matitreat natin as a total charge to an overhead account. Yun. And if loss is charged to a specific job, there is no need to record for the factory overhead control account. Yan. So automatically, initially pa lang, 156,000 agad yung i-record natin na work in process. Kasi parang during the conversion process na identify natin na related siya dun sa specific job na yun. And syempre, since nag-record na tayo, parang na-consider na natin agad yung initial na defective units, so we need to have an entry for the 3,600 considering na for us to record the spoiled goods account. Yan. And syempre, for the spoiled goods account, no? so may mga cases kasi na uh, 
uh, this could be directly charged as an appeared costs or pwede naman siyang maging uh, parang dependent na lang kung magagawa ng way ng company to have a profit for this spoiled goods. Yan. Pwede, ma pwede naman itong treated as an inventory muna and if could be kung pwede marisal, yan. So, the company could still take profit from the spoiled goods. Yan. Ayun. So, that's it for the charging for the spoiled materials. Yan. So, ang next naman would be the application for the defective materials. And for the defective materials, there are some rework na ginagawa for them to be considered as a good units even after being defective. So, for this particular uh, concept, so, ganun pa din yung magiging application natin. Either charge to the specific job or charge to all production. Yan. And kung nakacharge siya to a specific job, yan, so, we need to debit the working process and credit the related materials, payroll, and over applied overhead. Yan. And if charge to all production, yan, so, same pa din yung entry for the credits and for the debits we have an overhead control account yeah so ito lang ang remember nyo for every time na hindi nyo ma-identify na related siya to a certain job you need to apply them directly on the overhead account yeah all right so for this particular problem assuming na we have the following given yeah, so for the job 3044, ito yung total units na na-produce natin. And ito yung unit costs for, for this particular production. Yeah. And during processing of 300 units, we're found to be defective. So yung defective units for this particular problem is 300 units. And ito yung mga additional costs na required for us to make this defective unit units as good units. Yan. So, first we need to record yung uh, conversion ng whole 4,000 units. Yan. Assuming na charge to all production. So, kung charge to all production yan, so, ang treatment for the debit on the work in process would be the total amount of the uh, the total units na na-produce times the total manufacturing cost natin. Yeah. So, that would give us 160,000 and the related related manufacturing costs. And ito naman yung mga unit cost natin dito, if you can observe, no? Very similar lang with the uh, unit cost on the initial illustrative problem on the part of spoiled, spoiled goods. Yeah. Yan. So, yun. Going back lang doon sa rework problem natin. Yan. So, same problem pa din na meron tayong entry for the seal at the same time if the if the defective units will be charged to all production. So, we have this kind of entry na we still need to debit the overhead account and the compute natin yung overhead account by multiplying yan so balikan lang natin yung given no Nasaan yan ito yung given wait lang guys yan yan tamba yan so ay hindi pala yan ito to Ayan, so sorry, naligaw ako to. So, for us to compute yung 8,000 na factory overhead control natin, so we need to multiply the defective units na 300 by 40. Ayan. And then, less natin yung naging rework. And if you are going to compute for the rework, that's 2,000 plus 4,000 and 2,000. Ay, sorry, sorry. Yan. So, for this particular problem pala, we need to total the reward costs. Yan. The 2,000 
materials, the 4,000 labor, and the 2,000 overhead. Yan, yung pala yung for this part. Yan. And then yun, since we do have a rework, so after the re after reworking on this particular item, yan, that would be considered as a good units na. Yan. That's why we don't have a credit to work in process kasi hindi naman siya na treat as spoilage. And if directly charged to a specific job, ayan, so that's the time na instead of debiting a factory overhead control account, we need to debit a related work in process. Ayan. And initially pa lang, habang nagkakaroon tayo ng conversion on the cost, kailangang ibawas na agad natin yung estimates on the, on the lost units natin. Diba 300 units yun? Ayan. So, we need to deduct it directly to our work-in-process account. Ayan. And John, so yung, yung 4,000 na na-compute natin, that is based, no? Kasi kung mapapansin nyo, 156,000 lang yung debit natin dito for the work-in-process. As compared dun sa kanina, Diba dito, 156 din. Yan. So, same treatment lang din naman siya for the initial. Ang laging difference lang would be the second entry. Yan. Ayan. So, medyo gets nyo ba yun? Medyo na-confuse lang ako. Pero yun, hopefully, na-gets nyo siya. Pero yun, ang inote nyo lang dyan sa part na yan, insuries, na all rework costs could be directly uh, charge to the certain job para maging good ulit yung units. Yan. And for the scraps, yan. So, normally, magkakaroon tayo ng recovery on the scraps and kung kaya naman siyang i-recover or i-trace to a certain job, yan. So, ito yung pro forma entry natin. And kung hindi naman siya traceable, yan. So, technically, Yung scraps, kapag naman na-recover natin, pwede natin siya matreat as a miscellaneous income. Yeah. And if the scrap is recovered directly from the factory supplies, yan. So, ito yung related pro forma entry natin. So, yun, wala pala tayong illustrative problem. So, siguro, I'll have more problems pa on the losses part. And John, for the waste material naman, you need to note na ito yung pro forma entry natin for disposing them. So first, yan, still kapag allocated to all jobs or hindi siya directly specified to a certain job, yan, direct to overhead control account yung charging natin. Whereas kapag specific job siya, we need to have an application directly on the job. Yeah. Ayun, so yung accounting for basic material transaction summary natin for this one. Yan, for you to appreciate ano ba yung nagiging corresponding entries on the documents na na present ko kining na. Yan, so for this one purchases definitely increase in materials. That's why we have to recognize an inventory account. Emergency purchase of direct materials, again, so this one would depend on the accounting policies and procedures na in-apply ng certain company. Yan, so pero for some cases, pwede yung direct na work in process account and credit to accounts payable. Yan, pero in most cases, no, dumadaan pa rin siya lagi dito sa part na to. Yan. And then emergency purchase of Indirect materials, yan. Siyempre, overhead cost yung charging natin for this one. And for the returns of materials, yan. So, in, we need to revert or parang we need to uh, eliminate the materials account na initially na na-create natin sa system. Yan. That's why we need to credit the materials and debit accounts payable. And for the issuance of direct materials, yan. So, direct charge naman siya to work in process and yung credit natin would be the amount of the direct materials used. And yun, for the issue once of indirect materials and supplies, yan. So, since indirect costs to, yan. So, overhead control account yung debit natin and credit to a related inventory account. Yan. 
And lastly, for the return of excess materials from factory. Yan. So, nagkakaroon ng return kapag in-issue out na siya to a certain production facility. Tapos, hindi naman pala fully na-consume na -consume for that specific job. So, ibinabalik siya usually on the warehouse. Yan. And ito yung entry natin kapag ibinalik natin yung item. Pero in most cases, ang magiging application would be uh, lahat ng nauuna muna yung production before talaga ma-recognize yung certain costs. That's why, as to recording process na, alam na ng accounting side, ano talaga yung actual consumption of the materials. Yeah. And usually supported siya with a production order document. Ayun, so that's it for the accounting for materials. So, I'll give you more practice set, yeah, more illustrative problem na MC-based, yeah, multiple choice based para maging practice nyo. And yun, thank you so much for watching. So, for the next video, I'll be sharing naman the lecture on the labor, uh, applicability on the local labor natin. So, kumbaga yung direct labor natin on a local setting, including the uh, different government contributions natin for the payout. Yan. So, yun yung i-consider natin on the next video lecture. And yun, thank you so much everyone for watching this video. And let me know na lang class if you have any questions and clarifications. Thank you!